to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Devin Johnson, who is in Indianapolis. How are you doing, Devin? Doing good, doing good. Honored to be on the show. Yeah, and Devin overcame early hardships to entrepreneurship, starting with the sneaker flipping business at 16, self-educated in digital marketing. He founded Connected, now serving thousands, and is on a, on a break of his um, newest product, Sales AI, guided by spirituality. He emphasizes impact, growth, in mindset, coaching, motivation, and SaaS innovations. Okay, so Devin, let's get straight into it immediately. So, tell just explain to me what sales AI is and where the and where the idea for that came from. Yeah, so sales AI is two-way conversational AI for phone, text, and email. So it really specializes on speed to lead. As soon as a lead comes into a business, automatically working in with AI, either phone, text, or email, but also customer support. So it's another very common use case. Someone contacts the business for you know tier one support. And we put AI at work versus a human need to be on standby. And so in a, in a nutshell, that's what the platform is. And we focus on, you know, saving time and simplifying opportunities, our internal mantra. Mm -hmm. Now, where that came about is our first business connected. We, uh, we had over 20,000 businesses on that platform and it was a cold outreach platform. So right. LinkedIn, email, text, all cold. And we realized as we built that business and, and successfully exited that business, there's actually a bigger need in lead conversion than there is leads, right? Mm -hmm. With you being in the CRM business, pipeline business, yeah. I'm sure you totally understand. Absolutely. And so we were able to take all of the data from millions and millions of conversations running that business for almost five years and train a custom language model to be able to focus on driving outcomes. And so we didn't know what we were going to call it a year and a half ago, but fast forward, here it is, salesai.com. It's here, it's in market, and it's scaling very fast. Excellent. So what does, so what can AI do better and how can you ensure that, you know, cause people are a little leery about, uh, you know, AI and some people think, oh, it's just bots and this, and that. but it, what can AI do better to ensure that you, you know, your, the rest of your, your physical, your, your human sales team actually is, is it's enhancing their, their ability to operate. Yeah. So I'll tell you exactly how we use it in our own business. So, um, speed to lead is very important, especially if you're running digital advertising, right? We have intention spans of like seven mm -hmm. seconds or something very low, right? And, and think about your own buying habits. One moment you're thinking about some, next moment you're on to something else, right? right? And so the the where AI is unmatched against the human mm -hmm. is the ability to get in front of that lead as soon as it enters into the business. Unless you have someone 24-7, 365 days a year sitting in that business, ready to work leads, AI will outperform them 10 out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. And AI is at a point right now, especially, you know, like a sales AI platform where we train the language model, we built the data, we focus on the outcomes. It is totally capable of qualifying a lead and putting it to a calendar for a human to close. Wow. Where AI still has room to grow and, and where we're, we're focusing on innovation is actually closing business, right? That's a much more complicated cycle, mm -hmm. especially higher ticket. Yep. Now, there are customers that utilize the product for low ticket sales, right? If it's some no-brainer mm -hmm. you know, $100 yep. product or, or whatnot, right? Um, that's totally doable. But you're you know, $20,000, $15,000 sales, we still encourage users to qualify the lead and get it to the calendar, right? Mm -hmm. And then second, um, where AI is just unbelievably helpful is tier one customer support. We're talking right. about how do I click this button? How do I do this? How do I do that? It is totally capable of being able to coach anyone and everyone to walk through your product and answer basic issues and tech problems, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a hard role to keep in the business yep. and it's expensive for a business, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so. And it's, and it's normally a role that people only do exactly, as you said, for a certain amount of time before they want to move on or move up or whatever. So it's uh, you know, it, it tends to be 
it tends to be entry level. So just tell me. So this is uh, this is this is your own uh, model. Yeah. So we built our own language model and our own service layer, and of course all the UI UX with it. Mm -hmm. And then we're backed up by uh, Gemini. So we right. we do some override calls through Gemini, and we're all GCP on the back end. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, where do you see this? Where do you see this developing? Because there comes a point, obviously, where these, as you said, especially with high ticket items, where there's a lot of nuances, there's a lot of relationship building, there's a lot of other elements that are that are more, you know, where the humans really excel in it. I mean, where, do, how do you see AI really helping those folks at that end of the market? Yeah, for, first off, I just want to state, I think we're in a, we're still on, still in the buying curve of curiosity. Right. The, my team just got back from HubSpot inbound, which is HubSpot's yearly mm -hmm. conference. And all of the speakers, topics, and majority of everyone we talked to, they were trying to figure out how to prompt ChatGPT to write an email. I mean, the, the, the marketplace as a whole <laughs> is still sitting of curiosity. Now, right. Taking product innovation even further, like sales AI is on the cutting edge of the newest of the new as it sits. But where do I see it going? So we, we've we been beta testing and, and trying behind the scenes. Um, we partnered with a, a very well-known AI company called HeyGen, where they mm -hmm. build avatars. And, and they're arguably the most advanced avatars in the yeah. marketplace very well funded, very large top line revenues and, and whatnot. So we partnered with them to create Zoom avatars that can run sales calls and customer support calls. And so currently we are testing the ability not only for AI to book and qualify leads, but actually clone me, let's just say myself, yeah. show up on a basic discovery call, run all the questions and progressing that towards closing. Now, I think we're six months or so away from that being a usable technology right. at scale, but it's there mm -hmm. and it's crazy scary. Yeah. You is know, that, so. by the way, is that, uh, hey, Jen, is that the one where the CEO does the, has done the marketing videos, but it's really clone, a cloned version of him? Yep. Yep. Okay. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, very I hard think. to tell. I mean, it's, it's getting scary territory there because, I mean, it's, it, you can't really tell the difference, can you? No, and, and we have um, on partners on an, on an Instagram page called the AI Surfer. We've got a little over 300,000 followers on it. We started it just over a year ago. And every video on that page is generated by AI. Yeah. So it, it, it's getting very good. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so far with the, with the, you know, customers, what kind of success are customers are having or how surprised are they how this works? Yeah, I think the, the biggest lift individuals see because we really focus on speed to lead in our ICP yep. is being able to, you know, increase booking rates of leads 20, 30, 40, 50%. I mean, our own use case, we doubled our booking rate. So lead coming in and then putting it to the calendar, we actually doubled that mm -hmm. due to being able to work the leads so fast. I would say that's the first initial lift, but then where they really see some longevity in the product is being able to insert the AI to work that tier one customer support and be able to get higher skilled individuals on the back end to support their business, mm -hmm. right? Um, those are the two most significant lifts the businesses see. So, you know, doubling their, their meeting booking rate, which obviously leads to higher closing which leads to higher revenue right, right. So it's the it's the flywheel it's the ultimate start yeah. of the sales cycle um but also customer satisfaction and, and higher csas scores on the back end because customers feel like they're always available mm -hmm. and it's interesting there that you said that about especially about the tier one customer support is that then you can hire or higher skilled people so that you can uh you know escalate uh you know to them so in many ways it's um you know, AI is really encouraging people towards being specialists, being higher skilled and stuff, you know, and away from away, away from maybe those entry level tasks that maybe would have been their entree before. Maybe now you just need to get um, upskill yourself quicker. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, with every new 
major invention all the way back to, you know, gas power farming equipment, right? It, it did not take the farm. It did not wipe out the farming industry. Mm -hmm. Individuals upskilled and was able to do more faster. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what people need to realize. AI is not here to decimate human working population. It's here, it's here to assist you to upskill and to be doing a higher value task. Mm -hmm. We're far away from AI doing everything. We're yeah. very far away from that. And maybe just explain to people like, you know, how involved it is to build out a model and uh, that because, I mean, I think a lot of people still, their concept of AI is they just think chat GTP or one of those other, um, one of the other products and they think, oh, you're just using that uh, and that's just a database of like, uh, of everything. Uh, there's no quality control. Yeah, and, and that's what we really focused on is, you know, those are open source models. So mm -hmm. for anyone listening, those those models, your data goes to anyone and everyone in the dark, deep black hole of the web, right? And it's just regurgitating what you're asking it and, and what it's heard before, right? It's really cool, but it's also from a security and business perspective, crazy to think about all your information is going to the World Wide Web, mm -hmm. right? And so we wanted to approach it from a hybrid model, meaning we control the environment that your business information is sitting within. We're controlling the actions that's being performed, but we're not siphoning your data into, in our world would be Gemini versus ChatGPT. Yep. We're not pushing all of your information into, into ChatGPT. And, and to your comment about building a language model, number one, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it, trust me, it hit my it hit my pocket hard. Um, mm -hmm. Second off, it takes a very skilled. You have to run a data scientist. You have to run AI model uh, developer, full stack developers, front end and back end engineering, and then an architecture specialist to actually be able to get this to perform with UI UX. And it's extremely complex to be able to get a working service layer that you're controlling every element of it. Yeah, but that, as you said, but that's the only way that you're going to be able to, you know, guarantee some quality control, some security, you know, and so because a lot of people have a, um, a lot of people are worried about, you know, the ethical considerations or the biases or any of that and and stuff. So how do you, when you're building your model, like how did you ensure that it is as, shall we say, as um, as as fair as possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we don't trained to lean one way or the other we're trained to be indifferent mm -hmm. and we train against data sets of trillions of bits of data through data cohort providers and partners throughout the ecosystem and our own data to just focus on reality of humans need to make decisions yeah. and we need to encourage them to make decisions based on the inf information that we're giving it and so now i will tell you being backed up by an infrastructure like google they have a lot of the preliminaries taken care of like terrorism and, and all the mm -hmm. wild stuff right. that you think AI can go assist. They already eliminate the ability for anything crazy like that to even partake. And that's where the hybrid model, in my opinion, if you're building AI is the best way to approach it. Because mm -hmm. if you think a language model is expensive to build, don't even get started thinking about a large language model like right. a Watson or a Gemini or a, you know, an open AI. I mean, those, those are hundreds of millions of dollars to build uh, successfully. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that people kind of overlook as well as they don't realize the the expense behind it, because they think, you know, because people are bringing out all these tools all the time. But the tools are just sitting on top, top of other people's, um, you know, large language models. Um, so the tools are nice and everything, but the tool isn't the isn't the hard part, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, any any halfway skilled engineer can overlay something, make it look good, and and get some mediocre performance, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to voice AI specifically, there's been a lot of companies that have tried to just throw together, cobble together either Go High Level or ChatGPT and so on and so forth to try to execute the level of call quality that people are wanting, mm -hmm. and it's just it, it's inconsistent. Right, mm -hmm. and we have that in, in our in our earlier versions of product. We we struggled with that because you know our language model we weren't training it fast enough. Essentially, when we when we got into the 
to the early days of it. Right. Right. And so we had to back off of, you know, front end sales, let that catch up and actually massage it better because we're trying to replicate humans, which is the most complicated yeah. creature ever walk. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to be able to weave in emotions, laughter, pauses. I mean, there's so many elements. And um, for companies that are just throwing these widgets together, they're burning a lot of bridges and they're taking early adopters and giving them a bad taste in their mouth. And mm -hmm. so I just encourage you, as you are looking into making a decision and make AI investment, do your homework. Look at yeah. who they're backed by. Look at successful funding rounds. Look at the founder. Make sure the founder's kind of been there, done that, and, and and try to do some basic due diligence before you're just diving into, you know, an AI product because you need AI. Yeah, exactly. I mean, don't get, don't get, uh, don't fall into that shiny um, new toy syndrome, you know, because as you said, there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of considerations behind it. So tell me this, as we move forward and as AI becomes, um, you know, develops even more, do you think it's important, just a, just a, uh, an ethical question, whatever, do you think it's important that somebody knows that they're interacting with AI as opposed to a real human? Yeah, we do encourage all users, including ourselves, we introduce our own AI as this is an AI powered assistant from Sales AI. Mm -hmm. uh, right in the introduction, we encourage our customers to do so as well. I think if you're running above board on, on you know, where the market's heading as far as mm -hmm. compliance and so on and so forth, you should 100% um, be telling your customers that this is AI. And uh, I also follow that with, if you're looking at, for instance, sales AI, I am not your solution to go rip only cold leads. I am your solution if you have an established sales process, you're using you know, the pipeline or CRM, you have Facebook leads coming in. I am there to work them faster. Mm -hmm. I am not your last bet to try to save your business and go generate revenue. So right. I I am revenue automation on the backside, not cold prospecting. And right. you should not be looking at AI to do so because there's moving targets on potential compliance coming down the pipe for that. Yeah, and that's a good point. Just to, uh, if you can just underline that one is that for those people who are promoting or are getting like inundated with promotions for products that say they will do cold outreach for you and generate all of this, what are some of the issues that they're going to bump up against or already bumping up against? Well, you have a, a new iteration of TCPA. It's full in full effect in the United States where you cannot uh, cold call B2C with any robo dialer or AI cloned voices. Mm -hmm. Now, what is fair game is B2B phone numbers. Those are mm -hmm. still fair game. That is still good. But to just avoid any potential headaches, I encourage you to have opted in data. So meaning mm -hmm. you warmed the list up, you got consent for them to be contacted, or you're running paid ad sources that you know are obviously submitting their information to be contacted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd also go a step further when somebody tells you that they're, they're, all their data is opt-in, I would go a little deeper on that and maybe challenge them a little bit because, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's opt-in and there's opt-in, right? <laughs> yeah, trust me. Yeah, double. <laughs> so just to clarify, double consent. So yeah. someone checked the box and they submitted their information. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I, I, we prefer to work with companies um that are running paid ads that's the easiest yeah. you know you know the data's clean and you know they're double consenting to be contacted right 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 excellent um so one last uh one last question devon like uh how how do you think this in, in for the future how do you think this impacts how one constructs a sales organization because now we're you know before we're saying like oh this group of people goes here this group of people goes here now we're saying here's where technology goes yeah, I believe technology, you've got to be adapting, uh, adopting it in the biggest way now, right? Learning how AI can offset your front end lead generation process, your customer support process, but on the back side, looking at other, you know, programs and, and efficiencies to gain, right? right? There's the cost of human personnel goes up every year with the good old inflation, mm -hmm. the, you know, silent quitting within organizations is happening still rapidly. And so it's, it's getting harder and harder to depend on heavy human personnel, you know, led right. organizations. And so luckily technology is catching up, 
but you've got to adopt now. And, mm-hmm. and I strongly believe, you know, a year from now, it's going to be a different landscape when it comes to what is your standard sales process looks like. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, and the the point is as well is like as humans, we're very good at making very basic mistakes all the time because they are very basic, and we're just not focused on them. We're we want to be up here, and we tend to. So anything that takes away, you know, automation takes away the route, the routine, anything that can help, as you said, like accelerate leads, and all of those are are good things. Um, listen, all of Devin's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and sales AI. Yeah, absolutely. So born and raised here in Indianapolis, Indiana. I got my start at 15 of flipping sneakers, as you mentioned in my bio. So I started by reselling high-end Nikes, Jordans, Yeezys, so on and so forth. I My sister diagnosed with a rare form of brain cancer, put my family in a lot of turmoil. And my mom was a single mother and and, you know, so I tried to help her out however I could financially, and shoes was my outlet to, to do so. Started on a Toto 50 scooter, got my license, got he started moving around, got some wheels underneath me. And um, that grew from just flipping shoes to doing sneaker events. So mm-hmm. if you Google Indy All-Star Sneaker Expo, you'll see 15, 16-year-old Devin that thought he was everything in a bag of chips. But uh, <laughs> you'll see some old some old legacy films uh, with me back in my my, uh, beginning days. But, uh, you know, when I graduated high school, that market became very challenging for numerous reasons. Got into digital marketing, absolutely hated it in every way possible, honestly. (laughs) And the idea for for making leads simple with Connected was born and had to go through the school of hard knocks, how to figure out how I was going to run a technology company. And it took me a while to do that, honestly. But, a lot of mentors, a lot of YouTube <coughs> was able to start to scale that business. We were about 170 employees when we were all said and done. So I learned a lot of mm-hmm. people, management, revenue, so For on and sure. so forth. Um, and, and then in, in between there was, was successfully able to exit a, a second business called Breakout. We built a clubhouse competitor during COVID is we when we had too much time on our hands. So mm-hmm. a couple couple lucky outs and um sales ai is my my big go my big push and and trying to go build a a legacy business so uh fun fact about me used to race dirt bikes professionally i raced when i was 15 and 16 uh for team yamaha and a series called grand national cross country and um you know so i'm pretty fast on anything with a motor Excellent. Well, listen, fantastic. I encourage you to go uh, check out salesai.com, every, uh, .com, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And all those links will be below the video here, but go check it out. And uh, thanks again, Devin. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again very soon. Thank you.